I, I did not really understand that very well at the beginning. Yeah. Um, so again, I, I kind of got lucky. <laughs> yeah. So these are, I think this is like the third scenario where you're saying I got lucky. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that's worth noting to anybody who's thinking about this route. There's definitely <laughs> luck involved. <laughs> Welcome to the Military Bottom Line Podcast, where we learn from veterans and those currently serving how to make the most out of a military contract. We're here to motivate, inspire, and help you leverage your service to positively impact you professionally, personally, and financially during your military career and beyond. Welcome to episode 34 of the Military Bottom Line Podcast. Today on the show, I have my friend from high school, Matt Long, Dr. Matt Long at this point, who one year into medical school kind of realized $80,000 in debt from the first year was just obscene. And having to do another three years of that, um, he just, he wasn't willing to do it. And so he kind of realized that other people had different avenues of uh, paying for medical school. And he found that HPSP, health professions scholarship program through the Navy was a good opportunity for him. And so he talks about his time um, through medical school and kind of what that program has looked like for him as he's now in the Navy serving as a doctor doing his residency and really just lays out what that agreement looks like and uh, and kind of how it has benefited him uh, in, in many more ways than what he originally thought. So I think if you're looking into the medical professions and uh, and trying to find out how the heck to pay for that much school, uh, this is going to be a good show for you. So I hope you guys enjoy. Hey, Matt, what's going on, man? Good, man. Good. good. Hey, I, I'm excited to hear your story. I know uh, back in high school, we went to high school together, and I remember you like toying with the idea of joining the Air Force out of high school, but ultimately went to college. And so it's funny to see that you've ultimately found yourself in the Navy. <laughs> but, um, Played with the idea for yeah, definitely a couple of years, but yeah. Made my way into it eventually. Okay. All right. How, uh, you know, I, you, you decided to go for, like later on after college and like, what was the catalyst for you finally making that decision? Yeah. So out of high school, I always thought like, Oh, like maybe military would be a good gig. I checked out like Annapolis, like going to like a military academy or something. Um, I ended up deciding against that cause I want to play football and that was like above my level. Mm. So I'm going to Wesleyan University, it's in Connecticut, like D3 school. Um, there, like I majored in chemistry, played football, totally wasn't at all thinking about military. Um, but then like near the end of that, I got this idea of like going into medicine, going to med school. But I was a little bit behind because I was like late to the idea mm. of that. Um, so I didn't go straight into med school. I worked for a couple of years in Boston, um, at Brigham Women's Hospital doing like clinical research. And then at that point I was like applying to med schools and I thought like, Oh, like, you know, dang, like these med schools are pretty expensive. Maybe I can get someone else to pay for this. Um, and initially I checked out the air force for that. Um, like in, in what capacity? I mean, like, is it like ROTC for medical school or like when you were checking out the air force and finding ways to that they would pay for it. Like what is the program or avenue that you were pursuing? Yeah. So there's like kind of a couple of different ways of going about it. So there's a military medical school uses. Um, that one's based out of like Walter Reed basically. Um, and it's for air force, Navy, army, um, all different branches all go to one medical school. Gotcha. Um, but they can't fill all their like billets just based on folks coming out of that. So there's a separate program where you go to like a civilian medical school and you do a, a scholarship program called HPSP. So it's health professions scholarship program. Mm. And if you like get hooked up with that, they'll pay for our school. We'll give you a stipend. And then when you graduate, you can either go do a residency at a, like a military hospital, or you can like defer do your training at a civilian hospital and then like do your payback time after that. Okay. Um, so there's like a bunch of different routes. And initially I was looking at the air force one. Um, but when I was like contacting them, 
I hadn't gotten into schools yet mm. and it just kind of fell through. Um, so I just put on the back burner and, and I started like my first year, I went to Wake Forest Medical School. And once I got there, I just figured like, all right, I'll just take out loans. I'll just do what everyone else is doing. No big deal. Um, but pretty quickly I realized that like, Hey, not, not many people are actually like paying this on their own. Like you start asking around and you're like, huh. you're like that guy, like his, his parents are paying for it. Her parents are paying for it. Or like, she's got a full scholarship. Interesting. So quickly you're like, wow, like I am very quickly racking up a lot of debt. Here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This school. I mean, like all in all, like, um, housing and tuition, all that is like 80,000 a year. 80,000 a year. And that's, yeah. that's basically living expenses and the cost of school. Yeah. And it might be a little bit higher now. 80,000 um, a year. Wow. Yeah. It's wild. <laughs> this is like a private school and yeah. And all that. Um, so I was getting this idea of again, like, yeah, maybe I should check out like one of these military programs again. Cause they had recruiters there. Mm. Um, so there's a Navy like recruiter there one day at the school. And I just went up and, and talk to him and learned more about like kind of, you know, the, the opportunities that they had and basically how the whole program worked. And it seemed like a pretty good deal. So I, I signed up really without knowing a ton more than that. Mm. It was definitely probably a financial decision first. Yeah. Rather Just than like, like worried about taking on that mass amount of debt. You're like, whatever I got to do to not do this. Sign yeah. me up. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. Um, and it's, it wasn't like, oh, like I was super against the idea of like being in the military at all. Um, yeah. But definitely probably came as a financial decision first. Mm -hmm. And then like the additions, you know, the other perks of it. Yeah. Afterwards, were just kind of like worked in its favor. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I signed up. Um, I still went to medical school totally normal, just like everyone else there. I, I only had like one requirement basically um, while I was in school is that you had to do like officer development school um, yeah. at some point. And it was like a, basically like abbreviated boot camp mm -hmm. for like professionals under one of these scholarship programs, yeah. nurses, doctors, dentists, lawyers, JAG folks, like those, those things. Mm -hmm. um, that was only like, like five weeks. Um, other than that, like no commitments besides like staying, like you're supposed to stay in weight and, <laughs> and fitness requirements and sure. stuff like that in school, sure. which is pretty low bar, truthfully. <laughs> <laughs> well, for for you, maybe not for everybody. But <laughs> interesting. So, with before we get too deep in it, were because you're at Wake Forest, is that already a school that has Navy ROTC or? is it completely separate from any military affiliation? Like, can you just go to any school in the country and be like, I want to do HPSP? Yeah. Yeah. So it's like not ROTC at all. Um, basically as long as you go into any like approved, like certified, um, allopathic or osteopathic huh. medical school, um, you are qualified eligible to, to apply, um, and get signed up. Yeah. Interesting. And, and I know like I've spoken with people that did ROTC for undergrad. And so I'm gathering that they're not really even close to being the same. Um, but yeah. they like, they, like they had requirements either weekly or monthly. Like they had like almost a supervisor that would kind of like be hovering over them throughout their college tenure. You, there was none of that. No. So yeah, I, I didn't do ROTC. So I, I assume they probably have a lot more, I don't know, responsibilities mm -hmm. like weekly, like I oh, probably do drills and, and stuff like that. And, yeah. Um, and I was nothing, nothing like that at all. Like I wouldn't have known I was in it besides the fact that like when I needed to buy books, I just like basically like build them for it. And <laughs> <laughs> I got money in my account every month and money in your account every month. Yeah. Did, did you Good know that in. that was part of it? Like did I would have assumed it was like, yeah, we'll pay the bill for medical school. But other than that, like we're not paying you monthly to go to school. So you got, you got paid to go to medical school. Yeah. Huge perk. <laughs> wow. Um, so yeah, you get like, if you take out loans for school, 
um, just like the federal loans, like they'll pay for school and they give you like a, a small amount for like living expenses and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But for HPSP, you get a monthly stipend and it's actually a lot larger than what the federal government like loans would give you. Mm. So you can like live a little bit better, like not feel so guilty about like getting food out and stuff like and that. It's, it's not a loan. Like you don't have to pay that stipend back. No, no, no loans. Wow. Just getting paid. <laughs> Unreal. <laughs> Unreal. So you go to school. In, you were in Wake Forest, North Carolina, which isn't like terribly expensive. Um, yeah. Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Yeah. And yeah, Wake Forest University. Um, like, I mean, it's government money, so I'm sure we could look it up and Google, find out how much it was. But like, do you mind like saying how much it was monthly to go to school or like that you were getting paid to go? I think over like a year, it was like 25000 25,000. It's pretty good for like, so I wasn't like saving yeah. a ton, but like pretty you easy to keep like, your head above of, water, especially in like a low cost of living area. Yeah. Like North Carolina. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And so, so basically you're, and w- when did you decide to do this? Cause you had already committed to medical school for like first year you took out a loan for it. Yeah. So my first year, um, I started like applying in like the fall Mm -hmm. and it took a while. Kind of got to like push the like recruiters to make sure all your stuff gets in on time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So I ended up getting commissioned like this summer of 2017 because I started school fall of 2016. Yeah. Um, So yeah, it took like a couple months Mm. and because I was a little bit late, um, my first year wasn't covered. Um, So I do have loans for my first year of school. Gotcha. Uh, but then years two, three, and four covered. paid for, got my stipend, nice. got a signing bonus too, 20000 Really? Yeah. Did they just like hand you a $20,000 check when you signed the papers or how does that work? Yeah, when I commissioned. Really? Okay. <laughs> nice Sweet. little, I it was taxed, I think, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> and so commission basically after you've completed officer development school, that's when you got your commission? No. So for HPSP, they're definitely like, they try and recruit people sort of. So you have a lot of perks to it. Mm-hmm. One of them is like, you're commissioned before you even go to um, officer development school. Right. Yeah. So I was like going into my second year medical school. I was a commissioned officer. So I was just a one and said, um, Without any sort of boot camp until like two and a half years after that. Wow. <laughs> It'd be kind of weird, right? Because you could like go on base, you'd have like a keck. Yeah. Um, and people would like salute you and stuff. You have no idea like what you're supposed to do best. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So you're, you're basically a civilian with a military ID that is getting paid as a military individual would to go to school. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Sweet. Pretty good. That is sweet. Um, and so then you went to officer development school five weeks, you know, br- briefly touch on that. Like, what is that even worth mentioning? Is it a walk in the park? I mean, what is that like? Um, yeah, so it's in, in Newport, right? There's kind of two different schools. One is officer development school, mm-hmm. which again, kind of like for professionals, lawyers, dentists, doctors. And then at the same time, there's officer candidate school. Um, and those are the ones that are like, they aren't commissioned yet. They're like programs like 10 weeks and they can get rolled back. Mm. Might be longer than 10 weeks. Um, they're definitely a lot like harder on them. Yeah. (laughs) So as far as boot camp goes, officer uh, development school is probably one of the easiest options you could have. Gotcha. (laughs) Same time as kind of like, I don't know, Newport, Rhode Island. And like, I was there in February. It was just cold and kind of... (laughs) kind of boring but yeah not too challenging okay and so i i remember because didn't didn't you swear in when we were in hawaii like in your summer break yeah yeah yeah. and so like it it just seemed it's so different than like any other military joining process i've ever heard of you know it's like it's like they don't really care about much we just need a doctor so like <laughs> we'll 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 kind of let you do whatever you need to do in order to actually make this happen um yeah so yeah it's definitely unique and like it's cool because i mean were you were you working while you're in medical school is that even realistic 
No, so you're not allowed actually to work while you're in medical school. It's like when you like are signing all your paperwork and stuff like that, you basically agree to not take on any side jobs or anything. Um, Unless it's like specific like research. That's a Navy rule or that's a medical school rule? Both actually. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So I'd had actually when I signed up, um, a job lined up because your first summer of medical school is free, like mm. no um, obligations, right? Yeah. Um, and I'd had a job lined up that um, just kind of like working with like high school kids who want to go into medicine. And because I'd signed up with the Navy, um, basically I was told that, you know, you're not supposed to have two jobs. Mm. Like your primary focus should be medicine. Um, so I ended up, I had to quit that job. Gotcha. before I even started. And then instead I had the summer free and I took, you know, some of that signing bonus I had and <laughs> used that to f- fund a six week trip to Hawaii. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why not? Right. right. <laughs> That's awesome. Did, did you, so since you looked into the air force version of HPSP prior, and then you ultimately went the Navy route, did you find many differences in the two programs or is it pretty much just like the exact same thing there definitely no there's some differences um i didn't really have any reason for looking at air force first i think i just saw like a flyer or something yeah, yeah. um but ultimately i think i'm definitely happier that i chose the navy route mm-hmm. um i think i'm not sure the air force one might be more competitive right now okay um And it's primarily because between the two different routes, um, if you do your training in the Navy, it usually ends up being a little bit longer. Mm. Um, Basically what it is, is that um, whereas in the Air Force, you just go straight through with your residency. Um, So if you say you do like emergency medicine, you do three years, you're training, and then you're a fully trained attending physician. Whereas the Navy, um, they do something kind of unique where for a lot of specialties, you can't go straight through. You kind of have to do like uh, what you call a, a general medical officer tour. Mm-hmm. So after you do like your first year of residency, you go out and you'd like work in the fleet. So you'd go, you'd be on a ship for two years. You work with the Marines for two years. Gotcha. You could be like a flight surgeon, work with like a squadron for, they do that for like three years. Okay. Do dive medicine, work with the SEALs. Cool. And then after that, you come back. So it kind of, the process ends up, taking a little bit longer. Mm. Um, is, is that like, I mean, is I, I feel like if you're not dead set on like what you want to specialize in having those kind of offshoot opportunities would be advantageous and like something to look forward to. But I, I mean, I, I would imagine there are people that complain about that too. And they're like, I just want to be an orthopedic surgeon or something like that. And like, this is getting my way kind of thing. Yeah, totally. I mean, it's can definitely go both ways. Like one way it's a huge perk is that, if you're like, you know, in medicine, you're still not really sure what you want to do. You have so much flexibility. You can do your first year in like, you know, whatever you want. Right. And then if you want to change your mind, you go do one of the GMO tours and come back and join a different residency. Mm. So you could go from like, Oh, like I was doing emergency. I don't like that anymore. I want to go into surgery. Gotcha. Um, and also some of the opportunities you can do for those years off are, are pretty cool. Right. So if you do like flight surgery, you're basically like a, a primary care doc for a bunch of pilots, um, which is like not super demanding. Mm. And in addition to that, you go flying like they, they you go to flight school, you go flying with them like every right. month. Yeah. Um, you get stationed in some pretty nice places. You get paid more while you're doing general medical officer tours huh. versus when you're just in training. Um, so a lot of perks, right? You can do a lot of cool stuff. But yeah, some people are frustrated because they, they'd say, you know, I, I just want to do orthopedic surgery. Yeah. I need to do this to get to that next step. But How has it been for you? I mean, did you have something in mind? Like, I want to do this type of medicine and it's messed everything up? Or like, how has it played out for you so far? I got kind of lucky because when I went into medical school, um, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I I initially thought like, Oh, emergency medicine seems really cool. I'll make, I want to do that. Um, in your third year, you kind of rotate through all the different specialties and you see what you like, see what you don't like. 
and I didn't like emergency medicine, but I discovered that I thought psychiatry was really cool. Very interesting. Um, not super stressful. Um, so fortunately for me, there's a huge demand, um, across like all the different military branches for psychiatrists. Yeah. And it's actually considered like a critical wartime specialty, Hmm. just the same way, like trauma surgery, um, orthopedic surgery. Gotcha. Those are gotcha. versus things like pediatrics or OBGYN. Okay. Um, those are more considered like specialties for like the healthcare benefit of being in the military. You know, if you're, if you have a wife and she's has a baby, mm-hmm. um, you want doctors like that. Sure. Um, but psychiatry is considered like a critical wartime specialty. So there's a lot of demand for it. Um, so I kind of, I had my, I'd say probably my pick of like what training site I got to go to. Um, another perk is that because it's one that's in demand, you're not required to do one of these GMO opportunities. There's a lot more opportunity to just go straight through and okay. get all your training done at once, which is what I'm planning on doing. So what you're saying you got lucky because your desires aligned well with the Navy's needs. Exactly. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, if you're like interested in like dermatology, you know, relative to like being out in the civilian world, there's probably fewer yeah. opportunities relative to the applicants. Yeah. Gotcha. Whereas something like it was just what worked out for me. It was what I was interested in. It was also what they were looking for. Cool. Cool. So. Nice. So, uh, I, I, you know, going through the process, going through medical school, doing HPSP there, you know, <laughs> nothing's changed other than you're getting paid now and you don't have to worry about the debt. So it's all like gravy and obviously yeah. like no second thoughts early on. At what point did it, did things start getting real and you like, realize like, wait, I have this obligation to the Navy. And like, was there a point where you kind of <laughs> second guess yourself and you said nuts? Like, why'd I do this? Or like, how, how did that progress through your tenure? I think, you get a little stressed once you're actually applying. Um, so when you get like to the end of medical school, you're applying to positions for, for mm-hmm. training. Right. Yeah. And it's a little bit of like a black box. Um, like you're not really sure how the process works because you don't have anyone you can ask questions mm-hmm. to. Um, no one else is really in the program. You just kind of submit your personal statement and your numbers. And then eventually you're just told like this is where you got to go. Yeah. Um, so during that process, you get a little nervous, like, uh, like, did I do everything right? Like, did I submit everything on time? Mm. You just, you, you kind of, you're in the dark, right? Cause you're just off by yourself at, at school. Yeah. Um, so that point is a little like intimidating. Um, but once I found out, you know, I, I matched to San Diego, I was, I was pumped. It was great. Nice. That's exactly what I wanted yeah. and been happy since I've been able to come out here. Nice. No, my only regret is not like getting on board with it sooner and getting that first year of school covered. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Has has like now that you're in, you, so you're doing currently doing your residency, right? Or yeah. Okay. So, yeah. but you are basically in like the fleet navy. Like you're in like full time navy life, right? Essentially. Sort of. I mean, it's kind of like a dual role, right? Okay. So, like, I'm working at a hospital. It's, I'd say probably the traditional medical hierarchy mm-hmm. comes first versus like the military one, right? Because, so I'm like a Lieutenant in 03. Mm-hmm. Um, and there can be like other residents who could be like Lieutenant commanders if they've just, they had like a long or productive, like GMO tour, gotcha. something like that, but you don't see them any differently, really. They're just other residents. Yeah. Versus like if you have a lieutenant commander who's attending, so someone who's fully trained, mm. like that interaction is much different. Like they're in a, a structural sense, like definitely above you. Gotcha. So but at the same it's time, it's less about Navy rank and more about like hospital rank kind of thing. I'd say when you're in, you know, in a hospital, in a training setting, mm-hmm. that kind of plays a bigger factor. Gotcha. Um, but at the same time, I mean, it's still like a military culture, like 
you know, you still say, you know, you salute, sure, 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 ma'am, all yep. that stuff. Um, but the military part definitely comes into um, bigger play once you're like out of a training site, like a hospital, mm. you're in the fleet or like you're with a, a unit or whatever. Gotcha. Okay. Um, has it been, has it been like good to you? Has it been worth it for you thus far? I mean, now that you've kind of seen, you know, what it is like after medical school and what the Navy is like a little bit, having no experience prior to this with the military, um, is it kind of what you expected? Yeah, I guess I wasn't really sure what to expect. Mm -hmm. You know, right now I'd say, you know, you get frustrations along the way. Like you, I think everyone has these just general gripes with like the bureaucracy or like the (laughs) dealing with all the systems. There's a billion systems you have to to deal with. And it's like, oh, my pay's not right. You got to go figure out who to talk to. Mm -hmm. Um, But overall, I mean, once all that stuff is figured out. Um, you know, it's, it's good training. Um, and I say the the biggest perk for me is that I don't have to do this like delayed gratification thing anymore. That's Mm -hmm. super prevalent. If you're going through medical school, Ah, um, or basically like you go to school, you're taking a huge amounts of debt you try not to spend any money. Mm. You're just getting beaten down. And then you go into residency, you still, like in a civilian residency, you, you barely make anything, especially considering for how many hours you work. And then you graduate, and then you got to start like, paying back your debt as rapidly as you can. And then you've lost like your 20s and early 30s, like just kind of grinding and not seeing anything for it. Hmm. And at the end of that, like you can, you have a, you know, a, good, a good salary. But in, if you do like this HPSP program, which is really nice, is that you're getting paid in school um tuition's covered you go into residency you're getting paid a lot more than your civilian counterparts mm. um you can like start you know enjoying life a little bit not feeling so guilty about every dollar you spend um your like salary continues to kind of grow steadily throughout residency and as intending then you finish your obligation then you're at at the end of that you can go you can stay in or you can go and be like a civilian doctor and yeah you know, earn, earn those same salaries in the end, probably depending on what specialty you want to do, you know, you come out ahead or behind, yeah. but consistently though, you do a lot better earlier on. Mm. So I can like, you know, I'm 28 now I can buy, you know, yeah. new toys and stuff like that, skis <laughs> and surfboard, and not feel too guilty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a really, really interesting point is like, putting that like delayed gratification piece on it. Cause I, yeah, I mean, if you're going to medical school, like the traditional route, not doing the military, like you're not going to make any significant money or like invest any money until you're like at least 30. I mean, at best, you know? Yeah. Um, if you do things like, as like without any delay, you graduate from medical school, like 26. Yeah. Most trainings are like four years. So you, uh, by the time you're 30, at the earliest you could be like an attending. Yeah. Um, then you're just trying to pay back debt. A lot of times people have kids at that point and they're kind of behind the ball. They haven't been investing. They haven't been doing anything. That's wild. Yeah. That's a good point. And then like this, if you're, if somebody were to do this from the, like from the get go, they could start saving and investing like early on, which if there's any, like say at the end, average out, most doctors are washed between the two, but at least like if you do the Navy or the HPSP through Air Force Navy, you can start saving and retire and uh, saving and investing for retirement. And that's going to compound over like 10 years that somebody else wouldn't be able to do. Yeah. You're so far ahead. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I haven't been able to like start awesome. like my TSP and, and putting a lot of money towards that. Um, so that's, yeah. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't think about that. That's pretty awesome. Good, man. Um, I, I'm curious cause I know like other friends that become doctors and stuff and done the medical school, route not doing hpsp it seems relatively normal for somebody to like meet their spouse in medical school just because like that's the age of which you know you're in school and that happens <laughs> yeah um, you're around them so much <laughs> you don't have <yeah>. a choice <laughs> and uh, how does that work for the military like if you know one's doing the military one's not or they're both doing the military like because i know there are residency programs where the spouses could get paired together you know, things yeah. like that. So that, that 
that could be really challenging. Definitely. So for me, um, that happened with me. So I met Michelle my first year of medical school and she was already actually in the Navy HPSP mm-hmm. program, um, which is partially why I was like, huh, like maybe I should give this another look yeah. and start talking to this recruiter. Right. Um, so we started dating um, my first year and we can, are still together now. And fortunately, because we're both in the military, we both had you know, the opportunity to go to, you know, one of three Navy training sites for the specialties where we were interested in. Yeah. Um, if say you've got, you know, normal route, but you've got two civilian uh, medical students who are planning to be um, residents, right. Mm-hmm. They can go through something called like the match. Right. Um, and they can do what's called a couples match where basically no matter where you go, you rank your preferences and you will go together as a couple if that's what you want to do. Gotcha. Um, but because like the, the civilian match and like the military match are like to- two totally different systems. If you got one who's civilian and one who's uh, military, it could be really, like really challenging. There's no guarantee you'd end up like somewhere similar. Mm. Right. Um, for us, cause we're both in the military match. Um, you know, we just made everyone aware of that. Like, Hey, we're together. We like to go, together yeah um so we're both able to match out here in san diego cool so again we're just kind of fortunate because we were both interested in specialties with a lot of um positions or billets yeah um she's in internal medicine i'm in psychiatry okay um and we're both we we're okay candidates sure. for that so so it worked out um but yeah if one of us was say if i i didn't do this uh, hsp and she was it would be kind of challenging because I would have to try and find something nearby like gotcha. Gotcha. UCSD or something like that. Yeah, be no guarantees. Sure. So it, it definitely can be done, but it's like hard to be like in life. There's never a guarantee in anything. So you know, pursue yeah. it, try for it. But it yeah, I'd say there's definitely I've gotten lucky in how well it's turned out, um, and that you know the my significant other was in the same program. Um, this specialty I happen to like was in demand. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if neither of, the, neither of those were the case, there probably would have been more frustrations along the way. Um, but because, you know, that it worked out, like it's, it's been pretty great. Yeah. Awesome. Very cool. Um, I want to, cause like I, I know I don't totally have a clear picture of the transaction, if you will. Uh, so I want to try to help other people get a, a clear picture of the of the agreement, basically, between you and the Navy. And okay. so, like, yeah. <laughs> what like what did they give you, and then what do you have to give them? Yeah. So at like a very like basic level, they say that you owe one year for one year of schooling that they pay for. Okay. Um. But there's like a bunch of stipulations after that, right? <laughs> exactly. I don't understand all of them at the beginning. Yeah. But I basically you owe one year um of like a fully trained physician for one year of school to pay for it. So medical school is four years. Um I only had three years covered. Um so I technically I I if I wanted to, I would have only needed to owe them three years. Um that only comes after residency, because if when you're a resident, you're in training. You're not really fully like worth, you know, a full right. doctor yeah. to them, yeah. right? Um, so when your residency it doesn't really count. So once you're done with residency, you know, it could be like three to five, six years, mm-hmm. right? After that, then you do your payback. Um, usually that'd be like one or two different tours. The first one they kind of say is where they get their money's worth. They kind of send you wherever. Um, you can like submit your preferences, but um, typically you have less say in it. So you do something like be on a ship, um, do a you know a deployment and uh, maybe somewhere less desirable. Do you have to worry about deployments during your residency, or can they not deploy you as a resident? Um, they don't deploy you as a resident unless you're doing like one of these GMO tours. Okay. Um, then no, you they they just want you in training. They gotcha. want to get you through that and then have you. What you know, your most worth to them is a fully trained doctor. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, 
but yeah, so I did three years of school. Um, but this kind of one of the stipulations I didn't understand at the beginning was that they kind of view because you're getting paid more as a resident, they kind of view that as, um, another requirement for, for time owed. Mm. So technically, so I have a, you know, a three year of school paid for three years of school paid for and a four year residency. Um, so I actually owe them four years because you're supposed to serve both those concurrently. Gotcha. Um, so because I chose a longer, a residency with a longer, um, like training period, mm-hmm. I owe four years. Huh. Um, kind of the, the trick though, um, is that that signing bonus I talked about, Yeah. if you accept the signing bonus, so they have like these three year scholarships or these four year scholarships. Mm-hmm. If you accept the signing bonus, on the three-year scholarship, then you're locked into four years of payback. Um, So it worked out because I didn't know what specialty I wanted to train in um, when I chose like, Oh, do I want the signing bonus Mm. and the additional year payback that comes with it? Um, So I chose like, Hey, I know, I don't know what I want to do necessarily. Why don't I just take this money, lock into four years, no matter what at a minimum. And go from there. And then after that, I chose a specialty to have, have a four year training. So it worked out really well. Cause yeah. I could have just missed out on 20,000 bucks. So, so yeah, so you could have said, no, I don't want to do four years. I only want to do three years, give up the 20 grand and then yeah. you pick your um, specialty, which is requires four years anyways. And then you just missed out 20 grand. Yeah. Yeah. That would, that and would I did not sense. really understand that very well at the beginning. Yeah. Um, so again, I, I kind of got lucky. <laughs> yeah. So these are, I think this is like the third scenario where you're saying I got lucky. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that's worth noting to anybody who's thinking about this route. There's definitely luck involved. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, just cause yeah, it's, it's not very like well understood that you're, you're paying back both your medical school yeah. training and your residency training at the same time later on. And if one's longer then you got it served longer. Yeah. Um, so you know, if I had done, say, emergency medicine, which is three years mm-hmm. of uh, residency, then I, I would have locked myself into an extra year of a commitment that I didn't gotcha. necessarily need to do. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Hmm. What is, I mean, that was, that was a lot of good information. What is something, like one thing that you're like, man, I just wish I knew this from the beginning. Like if they just told me this from the beginning, you know, things would be different or I would have done this differently or something like that. Yeah. Um, there's just like so much uncertainty along the way, Mm -hmm. I'd say. Um, so, you know, looking back, it seems like, okay, everything worked out. Okay. But there was a lot of stress along the, along the path trying to figure out like, am I doing things right? Am I making the right choices? Um, so in terms of what I would do differently, yeah, like I, I've gotten lucky a lot of things. So I probably wouldn't change a lot. Mm-hmm. But if I had been able to like talk with other people going through the same thing, um, that probably would have led to less stress. Mm-hmm. Um, I was fortunate that there was um, some medical students in not the class above me, but two classes ahead of me who it was a couple and they were both Navy as well. and. Fortunately for me, they kind of, I was able to learn from their mistakes kind of, yeah, yeah. um, they kind of go through like the painful parts of the process, trying to figure it all out. And then I was able to just check in with them, meet with them pretty regularly and like figure out all the, all the tips and tricks. Yeah. Um, it sounds, this sounds like an opportunity. <laughs> like there are a lot of people doing HPSP that are kind of going through blindfolded that, uh, would be would benefit from, you know, those with experience with it. But. Yeah. It's hard to just like read about it. Um, yeah. you know, they send out like these big like PDFs of like, Oh, this is how the program works, but it's kind of unclear unless you get just able to talk to someone about sure. how it actually goes. Um, who's been through it. Right. Mm-hmm. Cause there's just, yeah, I guess like so many different stipulations like, Oh, you know, it's kind of complex too. Like you see you do one of those GMO tours that counts as payback time, right? Mm. So some people can do one of these GMO tours. Um, so you do your first year training of residency. You go do one of these GMO tours. It's two years. You sign up for another one. 
that's another two years. Hmm. You're done. You're done with your payback. You can then go out. You don't owe the Navy anything. You go do a residency somewhere else. Wow. So or that's you like- can, you know, rejoin, um, continue on a military residency. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So that's a kind of an opportunity to do your time without being like a fully fledged qualified doctor. Yeah. So it's kind of cool. I mean, a lot of people do it because if they're not in a rush to be like an attending, Mm -hmm. they can have military pay for school. You do one year of residency and then you go and do something cool. You're a flight surgeon, you're, um, uh, you know, dive medicine. Yeah. Go to some really cool training programs like in Pensacola or Groton, um, have a pretty good gig just working with like young, healthy, fit people. Yeah. (laughs) And after that, you're done with that and you can go and you owe no money. You owe no obligation to anyone. You can go train wherever you want. Cool. Hmm. That's wild. I mean, it sounds like a good deal. Do you have any regrets about it? Um, So right now I'm, I'm not like locked in. Yeah. I'm kind of in the process right now, finding out if I'll be able to go straight through. I've been told that that will happen. How do you mean straight through with your with residency? So I don't do a GMO tour. I go from my first year of residency to like the latter. Gotcha. And that's what Um, you want is to go through. And that's what I want because I I want to get to the end. I just want to be fully trained. I don't want to tack on yeah like years of um, like training or obligation. Yeah. Right. Because I don't want to go out. I don't want to do a residency somewhere else. I'm happy in San Diego. I'm happy like in my program. Yeah. Um, so if I were to do one of the GMO tours, say I did like a three year tour flight surgery, be cool. Right. I would come back from that. I'd be a little bit rusty on like my specialty. Mm -hmm. Um, but then the, the, the thing at that point was that I would have three years of training and even though I did pay back, an obligation of three years yeah. out of four during that flight surgery tour. If I come back and do three years of training, I then owe three years obligation after that. I like re accrued uh, gotcha. obligation because I, instead of like paying it back concurrently, mm. my medical school and residency, I paid a little bit and then I get, like accrued gotcha. more and then I have to pay back more. So my obligation would go from like, Eight years total, right? Four years residency, four years of um, fully trained attending mm-hmm. to like 10 years, something like that. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, that kind of goes back to what you're saying, where it's like you got to pay back years of schooling and years of residency because it's still in training. Yeah. Yeah. So, so again, it's, it's always like weird things you don't know when you sign up. Yeah. Because it's kind of complicated, right? Oh, the military is extremely complicated, <laughs> yeah. especially when you don't know anything about it. It's just like, none of this makes sense. Yeah. But it's really interesting that you say that also and you're like, you're kind of strategizing your timeline is because like, I feel like most people, when you join the military, you never think of it as like a strategic, you know, you, you, it's just like a job or like, a, a, you know, the route you're going to take. But then yeah. once you're in, you kind of realize that there are so many ways to like strategize your career, your, your requirements, your timeline. Like there's a, there's way more ability to control your career than I think people think when they join, you know? Yeah, no, it's definitely true. Um, yeah. So when you join like what I'm doing with the HPSP, you know, it's not like if you enlist and you've got like a three or four year contract that a lot of guys get. Right. Yeah. You know, Cause I, I signed up for what basically is like at a minimum, like eight years yeah. of a commitment to, to something and like the, the choices I'm making now of like what I'm applying to, like, you know, this year, I'm not going to like, are going to like have repercussions for like eight, 10 years down the road. Yeah. So it's, it's definitely a long commitment. Um, and it benefits you to kind of be cognizant of that and like, like what your choices are making. them, If they're still going to be consistent with what your desires are. Yeah. You know, when you're 10 years older. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a little hard to tell what the future holds for sure. <laughs> um, awesome, man, awesome. No, I appreciate that. Uh, I like to ask a couple kind of closing questions um, to give people a, a, I don't know, a good idea of kind of military in general. 
Yeah. Um, one of them being a, an idea of the spectrum of like your favorite day versus your least favorite day that the military has provided you. Okay. Um, thus far, what is, what does that look like for you? Um, favorite day again. So I've only been doing this for like six months of active duty. Right. Yeah. And it's all just been in a hospital. So I don't have a lot of those cool, like sea stories to tell people. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but like biggest perk so far is that like when I was in med school, um, you're able to do kind of like these audition rotations where instead of being at med school, you're able to like fly out to one of the training hospitals and, um, work there and, and meet like the doctors there. Right. Mm-hmm. And I did that, um, in my fourth year of med school where I spent two months living in San Diego. Um, again, it's like, they pay for you to fly out here. They put you up in like a hotel. There's like this awesome hotel on Coronado right on the beach. I was able to stay there for two months, getting paid, um, going and working at the hospital. Just, I don't know. Very awesome opportunity. Yeah. 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 (laughs) Um, most challenging or frustrating day, hardest day. I'd say it's kind of those first few days when you show up to the hospital and you mm-hmm. don't know like what the hell's going on. <laughs> like you've got, you're, you're wearing a uniform. No one's ever like taught you how to wear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. People are saluting you and you, you can't, you don't know how to tell like what rank they are. Cause yeah. you, again, you haven't like learned that yet. <laughs> uh-huh. Um, like they had just switched over like to the NWUs. And I think they had like, you had like the, mm. you know, emblem like right here and it's camouflaged on a camouflage background. And you're just like, I, I, I can't learn this. Like it's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's definitely. You, you totally feel like total imposter. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny because like every other Avenue of joining the military, that's like what they just beat that into you. Like is like the military, you know, standards and how to read, rank and how to like just how to act like a military person but then as soon as you know if you're going in md i guess jag or dentist like they just don't give a rip if you know how to be in the military they just want you to be a doctor you know (laughs) yeah so So, i mean you learn this stuff a lot of it when you go to like officer development school but like for me i did that like at the very end right mm -hmm. so i was working at like these like hospitals as a student before i had done any of the training for it right so people like expect you like to, to know all this stuff and and you see, you don't, you don't know any of it, right? You're yeah. like, like, why does it matter? Like what way my laces are like tied? Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So there's just so much you don't know until like you kind of learn it and mm-hmm. you're a total imposter until then. <laughs> yeah. That's all right. That's right. You're not an imposter now. I assume you, uh, you No, I, I've been anyway. long enough now. I know who to salute. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right on. Um, what is, uh, you know, I know you've, it's been limited, but what's the favorite, your favorite place that the Navy has sent you thus far? Um, I mean, yeah, I've been super fortunate to just come out to San Diego and spend all my time here. Yeah. That's been awesome. Um, I'm definitely excited about some of the other sites. I, I think the one of the biggest reasons I chose the Navy was just like the locations, mm-hmm. right? I love like being on the water. Yeah. Um, I'd say that was probably one of the, the top reasons I chose it. Like you go to San Diego, you could go to like Portsmouth, um, or you could go to like Bethesda. And those are all like pretty cool places to be mm. versus a lot of like Air Force or Army. Middle of nowhere, dude. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I tell a lot of people that like think about the opportunities to be stationed. Like Air Force and Army are just, dude, they're nine times out of 10, they're in the sticks, you know? And like, nobody yeah. wants that. But. Yeah. So, um, been super happy San Diego. Like when I am done with training, I would love to go to like Japan. Yeah. Um, I think that's probably like where I'd like to go most mm-hmm. cool. to continue on. Um, so yeah, huge perk of the Navy is just being on the water and places, cool places. Yeah. yeah. Do you feel um, like, oh, yeah. go ahead. No. Do, do you feel like you're like, as you learn more, as, as you spend more time in the Navy, do your plans for a career change? Like, do you think you'll keep like stay in the Navy, maybe do active duty or reserves or, or 
do you look forward to just doing the civilian thing? And I think again, it's, it's like eight years down the road right now. So it's hard to say for sure. I don't think I'll stay active duty and do 20. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, I think just kind of financially civilian pay is like kind of hard to beat. There's yeah. a lot of perks and like different bonuses, retention bonuses, things like that, that the Navy does. Um, one thing I, I could see myself doing is after these eight years would be doing reserves. Yeah. That way I can still kind of be involved, kind of do drill and stuff like that. Um, but not have all the same kind of restrictions mm. that active duty life brings. I think eight years is like a plenty long enough to <laughs> yeah, yeah. get a feel for all that. And so but maybe I'll change my mind again. You know, yeah. You never know. Sometimes it's, it's like, it seems like reserves is a way to do all like the fun things without having to put up with a lot of the negative things, you know? That's my impression right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's always a worthwhile, uh, you know, idea to keep that, that option open. So. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome, man. Well, no, I appreciate you sharing your story and giving this insight. I know, um, a couple of people have asked me questions about this program. I'm like, dude, I, I'm no doctor. I don't know. So thanks for, <laughs> thanks for sharing your story. Um, any, any parting wisdom or anything you'd like to share on your way out? Parting wisdom. Um, I'd say there's just so many perks of like being in the military that just people don't know. Like even like, you know, all the people I work with, right. You'd think like they'd be kind of like savvy financially. They're not, I don't know. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've gotten basically just, I don't know, fortunate in a lot of ways because, you know, I, I try and be mindful of like all the different, like, um, perks being in the military, you know, like the, these, fancy credit cards you can get mm. um, like the Amex platinums and the chase <laughs> Sapphire reserves and all that. Yeah. They have like 500, $550 annual fees during the military zero. Yeah. They have like all this, like, um, you know, travel credits you can get with that. So you can, they'll pay for your flights. Right. Uh, you can fly like bags fly free. So if you want to go like take a trip somewhere and mm-hmm. bring your skis, yeah. boom, taken care of. Right. So I feel like all those perks like add up. Yeah. Um, and just, yeah, I, I feel like people just are not on top of that. Yeah. Cause they're not looking for them. Mm. Yeah. I mean, that's not to say like join the military for the military benefits or like the well, military. If you're in, I just feel like, you know? <laughs> like, if, come on, you got to take advantage of this. <laughs> oh yeah. Once you're in and you find out, it's like, wait a second. Dude, I, I've spent, I have saved so much money with the Lowe's 10% military discount. It's crazy. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and it's like, heck yeah. You know, <laughs> this alone is worth it. <laughs> yeah. It's way, it's way more than just like the free Applebee's like dinner. <laughs> <on> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's very true. But awesome, man. Well, I, I appreciate it. Um, would, if, if somebody were to reach out and uh, have more questions about the HPSB, would you be willing to? Want to help them out and yeah for sure cool yeah definitely happy to help where can people uh find you are you active on instagram uh yeah on instagram hit me up uh matt.w.long l-o-n-g awesome shoot me a message thanks man i appreciate it i look forward to seeing what the navy provides for you <laughs> and uh, how your career goes all right good talking right. to you likewise Hey, thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed that episode with Matt. Uh, a lot of good information. I know like if I were looking into HPSP or a certain um, approach to, to paying for medical school or dental school or legal school, um, you know, th- he's got a lot of good information to share that he, he is sharing from experience. And like he said in uh, the interview, he wishes he had somebody to kind of like show him the ropes. And so uh, if you know somebody that might benefit from this, send it their way. Uh, And like he said, he's more than willing to help and answer any questions you have. So find him at matt.w.long on Instagram, and he'd be happy to help. So hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next week.